When they pump it in the juice, it's going rock, right. COVID-19, or the coronavirus, continues to sweep the nation and the globe. Many of us are thriving, and many of us are just surviving. Baldwin was lucky enough to sit down most recently with the brilliant, young, gifted, and black Courtney Richardson, former stockbroker and current attorney. She's also the owner of the Ivy Investor. And she sat down with us to talk about Black generational wealth, financial literacy, and what to do in the midst of this crazy pandemic. So, we're going to bring her on, and she's going to share with us a few nuggets. So pay attention and get out that pen and paper. When they pump it in the it's going rock right. With the Black community being reported by the media as being one of the top carriers of COVID-19, one of the potential disparities is the lack of health care. Um, many people don't see the correlation between financial disparities, um, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, financial disparities and health disparities as it directly relates to our people. But can you talk about that in terms of the domino effect that it has um, and how it affects our people? Get up on the scratch, battle star galact, cosmic abstract. The first out the limo was the nigga Charlie Mack. Westfield represent KD, where's it at? So I think one of the problems that we have as a society is that we think everything happens like in a silo. Like, you know, healthcare is over here, but finances are over here. And it's like, no, they're all interconnected. And once and when you realize they're all interconnected, you know that a problem in one place like for example, like so, I'll, I'll give you this great example. So if I mess up my 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 leg, I start walking funny, right? Mm. But then I start having back pain because now I've changed the gait of my body. So a problem that started in my leg now gives me a problem in my back too. And that's the same exact thing when it comes to healthcare and finances. They're all interconnected. So if you have a problem in healthcare, it's going to affect your finances. But if you have a problem in finances, it's going to affect your healthcare. Right. You know, and I think that's kind of like that's kind of background. Rock the block, need the rock, rock on. One hundred X, need the rock, rock on. Graham Squad, need the rock, rock on. BSB, need the rock, rock on. When you look at the statistics about maternal health, about how a lot of African American women die mm -hmm. in childbirth, when you even read, um, a couple years ago, I was reading about Venus uh, Williams, uh, no, Serena Williams. She actually had blood clots mm -hmm. before she actually had her baby. And she was saying, I'm telling you, I know what this feels like. And they basically ignored her. Mm. And basically, you're not presenting the way we expect you to present, so whatever. So, right. so you have the, the finances aspect of the healthcare. Then you have when you go into a healthcare setting you're not listened to you're not respected you know they don't pay attention to what you're saying you know they ignore you all those other things so it's 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 like a recipe for disaster and i just feel like you know when i mean just when i look at the, the black community like when the white community or white america or society gets a cold we get the flu so whatever is going on we are going to be adversely affected doubly or even uh three times as much and that's mm. what's happening right so even when you look at unemployment you know you can look at white you know society or white numbers they're here african-american numbers are here it's about dead time represent my peoples on the end of their side live like my 93 shit phone vibe i used imagination like on soul master like thick with the off are here exactly and then so speaking of unemployment rates are at an all-time high what can our community do in these unprecedented times to survive? How can we begin to strategically place ourselves to position ourselves to be in a better place using these resources? So I think 
the biggest thing is education. And it's not the education that we kind of go to school for. Um, I forget, I think it's Jim Rohn when he says that self-education will make you a millionaire. Mm. That, that, I think that's a paraphrase, and it may not even be right person. Okay. But, but, you know, but, but it's, we get, it's, yeah. it's good information. I think self-education is a very good one. Um, I think one of the things is that we kind of chased after college, but if one of the things that I would like us to get away from is actually going after college just because somebody thinks we should go. There's a lot of trade jobs that make as much or not or more than what I make, you know, and I'm like, well, get into the trade. So figure out how you can get into the trade because I I think honest to goodness is that this is a time for all of us to pitch. Like I think this is the time where it's like, okay, it's about getting very real with yourself. And you know, understanding your gifts and talents. And not everybody's supposed to be an entrepreneur or whatever, but what can you do to leverage in this time, you know, basically sharpen your skills, sharpen your talents to be able to take that to market. And market doesn't mean that you're taking it as an entrepreneur, you just be getting a better job. You be you know, learning those skills. Um, on top of that, um, in terms of like being more, being trying to be responsible, kind of cutting back on consumerism. I was embarrassed when I saw my bank account the other week. And I was like, well, there's a lot of money in there, more than I'm used to. It's like, hmm, well, how was that? Well, you haven't been eating out. You have been Me too. Uh -huh. Me too. And I it was, was like, bad. It was bad. It was bad. And I was like, I was doing too much. Right. Like, that's exactly it. So I said, okay. I said, well, like putting myself on a, like a real budget, you know, putting my, putting some savings away. Like, if, and not everybody can save. And I, and I think that's the other thing is that, you know, understanding where you are in this pandemic, because some people are thriving and some people are just surviving. I mean, I think if we all get ourselves in a business mindset about running, running our lives like a business, I think we work out a little bit better. Hmm. And it's not necessarily like kind of taking the the love out of life that's not what i'm saying at all but when i'm a business owner when i'm i'm saying okay when i like put stuff on social media i'm like okay well what's 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 going on today like what's going to what's going to resonate with people like that's the first thing i'm thinking but hmm. same thing when i'm working out in the world i'm trying to pivot in in a job or um, a career is that well what's thriving and not only what's thriving right now but what's going to be thriving in the future when they pump it in the juice is going rock right True. In the streets is going rock right True. At a show is going rock right True. Here we go with the butters boo You know how we do when they pump Let's get into black ownership because um, in one of your live sessions, you mentioned that black ownership is a revolutionary act, um, actually a form of rebellion. Still, the racial gap between blacks and whites um, has widened in terms of home, own, home ownership specifically. Um, analyzing financial trends today, do you think that gap stands to get bigger or smaller? Um, what with COVID going on, and then even after so the weekend. Oh, you remember we 3D with study B. Enough respect, go to a vet money. PSK, Ms. on pause the name. So, definitely feel like it's going to get wider. Um, mm. So we're in a recession. So we're in a recession. And a lot of times, and I think we talked about this, I touched on it earlier, is that when white America gets a cold, we get the flu. So whatever that happens to them, it's going to happen to us worse. So we already know that black unemployment is higher than everybody else's unemployment. So mm -hmm. that's going to affect us in the long term longer. Because again, when you're looking to own something, like when you're looking to own a house, and it's not, and not everybody's meant to be a homeowner, not everybody's be, meant to be an investor, but I, you need to do something else. But even when you're looking to go buy a home, they want your whole life story. So, you know, you not having, like, and they, they care about your credit because your credit is, is a history of how responsible you are with somebody else's money. So that they're looking at your credit. But if you're unemployed, well, what are you going to stop paying first? You're going to start paying bills that like your credit card bills or whatever things that you can kind of push off until later because you got to keep the lights. Where is it at? Because we not taking no shorts no more. You, you to the rebel to pay in a dice roar. When it comes to owner business ownership, we 
you know, that's not what we were taught or kind of brought up around. And my dad is actually was an entrepreneur for years. So I kind of saw it. And so now as a as an entrepreneur, like I'm and his grandfather was an entrepreneur. My grand my other grandfather was so I've I've been around entrepreneurs. But if you're okay. not around it, you don't even kind of think of it as an option for you. Mm. And you keep but the thing is is that like you keep doing the same stuff and get and like hitting your head against the wall. And that's something that I've noticed a lot is that, again, we're afraid to own a business if we have the acumen to do it or the desire to do it. We're afraid because we just don't know what it is and we haven't seen anybody else do it. We do right. by modeling. We model a lot, which is fine. But if you don't see it, how are you going to own something? Because you don't see mm-hmm. it. So I think we have a gap there also. I noticed that there's a conversation of like, well, they should just pull themselves up by their bootstrap. Well, what bootstrap? We don't got food. <laughs> Well, what bootstraps? <laughs> what do you mean? Everybody is bad off. There's been some real structural things that have happened to us. We had red lines that affected the uh, values that we've had generally. So I mean, seriously. Black community will be valued less than right. black community. Off, off top. And then you have what's called usury, which would basically, for the same thing, we would end up paying significantly more in interest. Um, so you had that going on. And then you just had general, you know, everyday garden variety racism. So, mm. I mean, so we're, we're consistently, you know, when we says pull up by your bootstraps, you're like, well, what bootstraps? And this is not for me to say that we can't be, um, that we can't be successful because even still, we still, yet we rise. We are, cons- we are still a successful group of people. So let's have people that are actually making a huge difference in lives. Positive. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And they're also making a lot of money doing it. And I think yes. it, it pushes back against the par- the conversation that if I'm going to do good, I can't make money while doing it. Mm. And I just, I love the fact that that, that rails against that whole idea is that mm-hmm. no, you can do good and make money at the same time. And so I think, you know, on the other side is that we ha- we're starting to see these examples of success that isn't necessarily the go to college, get a job, blah, 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 ideas of success and kind of gives us a broader range of, of possibilities. So I'm excited about that too. Talk a little bit about the lack of education in our community where the stock market is concerned and why you started your business. So I left school, like left school, graduated, and my parents were like, you need to get a job. I was going to go to law school. And then I was like, uh, not yet. Ended up becoming a stockbroker, just kind of by chance. Um, ended up working for Merrill Lynch. And mm-hmm. I started in 401k service, so I learned too much about 401ks, but that helps a lot now in the business. Um, And then I moved over to what's considered high net worth. So I was doing high net worth advising, average client about $3 million. And one of the things that I noticed consistently is that as I kind of rose, I became assistant vice president, I think I was 26. Um, And as I rose in the ranks, there weren't that many people that looked like me Um, until 2009. And I was laid off and then I went to law school. And again, um, you know, I was one of, I think my class in law school is like 155. I was one of six black people. Mm. Uh, so, you know, again, you know, I was kind of like, all right, well, I've been here before. So that wasn't a problem. But then when I graduated from law school, I went into oil and gas. And, but then I started having a lot of my friends kind of transitioning in their own lives. So they're like, court, I'm about to leave this job. I'm about to cash out my retirement. No, you're not. You're not cashing out your retirement and taking taxes and a penalty. You're going to roll it over. And they're like, well, what's a rollover? And of course, when you're in your 30s, your late 20s, you're not thinking like, oh, when I get to 60, you're not thinking about it. But all of that, all of that matters. So I tell people all the time, like, always roll it over. But the thing was that they didn't understand what the rollover was. They didn't really understand what they had at their employer account, like what they had as a, as a job. Because you get your 401k, your dental benefits, and your health benefits at the same time. And they're like, be blessed. Like, who understands any of that? And it's not Mm -hmm. the rules. So I said, okay. So I would have to sit down with my girlfriends and say, listen. So I was like, listen, I'm going to do this blog. I'm going to say, because I was already, I was a frustrated writer. So, you know, the work I was doing as an attorney was just not fun. So I was like, I'm going to do this blog. You can read it, pass it to your friends, and we'll talk about it. So that's kind of how the Ivy Investor started. 
Wow. That's all it was. It was just me putting good information on a blog to say, hey, you know, this is what you should be thinking about. Because a lot of people were asking me the same questions over, over and over again. They were asking mm. about cars. They were asking about wills. They were asking about so many different things. And I was like, I can't do this with y'all, but I'll do it on the blog. <laughs> So that was 2014. And then in 2017, I started teaching classes because people were like, all right, this blog is good, fine and dandy, but uh, could you do a class? And I was like, uh, I guess. So then I tried to figure out how to do a class. So I started doing that and I was doing well. And then I was kind of like, oh, well, people actually really need this. So I, that's kind of how I started doing like full Ivy Investor. And I said, um, maybe about 2018, 2017, I said, I want my Instagram to be teaching. I want to teach people. I want people to see something on their feed that's educational for them. So that's kind of how I think I was like inspirational, educational, and then some random ratchet nonsense occasionally. And that's kind of what I had. Like that's that by my little mix, but people find it to be very helpful and them kind of learning about finance in a, in a fun way. So yeah. I tell people that investing is a a marathon and not a sprint. It's about having that foundation of an account that you don't touch, that's an emergency fund. It's also dealing with your debt, not necessarily you know paying off your debt because it just, it doesn't make sense time-wise because time is not on your side when it comes to investing. Like the sooner you do it, the better. Um, but having a plan to get rid of your debt. So basically saying, hey, you know, I'm gonna put, like making your debt payments a line item, but making investing also a line item. Saying, okay, I'm gonna put $500 towards my debt and I'll put maybe $20 or $30 or $40, whatever, towards investing. And as I pay down my debt, I put more money in the market. So it's kind of, so you'll always have that line item going out towards your goals, but it would just be different. So my goals are to pay off debt and invest. But it, once my debt is paid off, now my goal is only to invest. So I was putting 500 towards that, but now I'm putting, you know, you know, a little bit more than 500 towards investing. Um, you, I tell people all the time, you can get rich slow. It's okay. And, and I, I think that's also important. So starting, you know, basically having that foundation. Um, I Because you can get broke overnight too. Oh, facts. Big facts. Okay. Big facts. People always forget, just like you can get rich overnight, you can get broke in an hour. Mm -hmm. Or less. <laughs> or less. Or less. Okay. So, I mean, I, that's the thing. Uh, my favorite books, um, just in terms of being like a really good book for investors to start, is One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. He was okay. a really good mutual fund manager. Really good book. It's just, it's because it's simple. It's kind of like some people talking about Wawa, but it kind of makes it a little bit more plain. Um, love that book. Um, I have a class on marijuana investing because a lot of people like that. I also have a class on 5G, investing in 5G. Um, and I have a class on investing in IPOs. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, dividends. And then I have a dividends class. Tell everyone where they can um, find you on Instagram, Twitter, and please plug your website. Okay. So you can find me on Instagram. I'm the Ivy Investor. That's T-H-E-I-V-Y Investor. Um, that's my Instagram. That's me on Twitter, too. That's me on Facebook. Um, and that's also me on Instagram. I'm uh, not Instagram, also on YouTube. So I'm like all the same Ivy investor all across the, the uh, I guess, the interwebs, <laughs> the social media sites. Um, and then my website is the Ivy investor. So www.theivyinvestor.com.